Killer Party has just been released on Blu-ray from the fine folks at Scream Factory. I last watched this movie over 25 years ago when my parents rented it for me on VHS from the local video store. I remembered loving it as a kid but really couldn't recall a whole lot about the movie now. So did it hold up? Well, let's find out. Killer Party focuses on three friends pledging at a sorority. Now if one of them looks familiar it's because she actually appeared five years earlier in the slasher movie classic Final Exam. So the pledges have to go through a hazing process, which includes saying this particular line when asked a question. I myself prefer a big fat cucumber. <laughs> I gotta admit, I laughed. Now the final initiation takes place in an abandoned frat house where someone died 20 years earlier in a freak guillotine accident. Or is it pronounced guillotine? I don't know. So one of the pledges, Vivia, plays a prank on the sisters, playing up the fact that the old house is haunted. But guess what? The frat house really is haunted by the ghost of Alan, that's the dead guy's name, who is out for revenge. Killer Party is a unique entry in the 80s slasher subgenre. This is clear right off the bat with the opening 10 minutes or so. I really don't want to spoil it because it's pretty clever and fun, but it really starts the movie off on the right foot, and the fun continues with the likable characters and tone. By the time Killer Party was released in 1986, the slasher cycle was starting to near its end. But this one was actually a breath of fresh air. The film was written by Barney Cohen, who had previously scripted one of the best Friday the 13th films, The Final Chapter. He was going for more of a horror comedy with this, and although the film does have a nice sense of humor, the horror elements are taken seriously, which I appreciate. Interestingly enough, this was one of three April Fool's Day themed slasher movies released in 1986. In one of the interviews included with this release, actress Sherry Willis Birch states that any time she wants to be reminded of the 80s, she just has to watch this movie. And she's right. This movie just screams the 80s with every frame. Not to mention the rock and soundtrack, which includes some really cool tunes, including this one. Good stuff and kind of ironic considering the fact that most of the cast will be dead by the end of the movie. The film has solid direction from William Fruitt, who has an impressive list of genre films to his name, but I actually haven't seen any of them, and my familiarity with his name came strictly from the multiple episodes of Friday the 13th the series that he directed. Speaking of which, I really need to continue with my rewatch and get some more reviews up of that. Alright, so we need to talk about the elephant in the room. I am, of course, referring to the gore in this movie, or lack thereof. Apparently the film was butchered by the dreaded MPAA, who were notorious for cracking down on horror films in the 1980s. So nearly all of the violence was sadly removed. It's crazy because the ratings board was tougher on this than even the Friday the 13th series, which they hated. It almost makes me wonder if the studio had a hand in trimming the violence as well. Maybe the studio got tired of the back and forth with the ratings board and just decided to cut it all out themselves. Or maybe not. But it is strange just how much violence was trimmed out. Now there's still some juicy stuff here and there, but not a whole lot. So I read that an old issue of Fangoria magazine included some photos of the deleted gore footage. I actually didn't have this particular issue, so I immediately bought it on eBay for this review. Killer Party appears in Fangoria issue number 45, which includes Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning on the cover. Inside it has an interview with Killer Party screenwriter Barney Cohen, and sure enough, it's got a couple deleted gore shots. First up, here's how this particular death scene went in the film. <laughs> and here's a picture from Fangoria where we were actually supposed to see her stabbed with the trident. And then there's this scene. Come on, I heard you. Well, check out what originally happened. Unfortunately, that's it for the photos of the deleted gore. I wish they'd included a few more pictures. It really is a shame that the movie is so badly trimmed, and I'm sure the extra footage is long gone by now, but even still, Killer Party is a ton of fun. It's a lot more unique than most 80s slashers, and the crazy third act is good stuff. Think The Exorcist meets The Evil Dead with a slasher twist. Picture quality is fantastic, and the vibrant 80s colors leap off the screen. Screen Factory has included seven brand new interviews here with various cast and crew. We've got a seven minute interview with actor Ralph Seymour, a nine minute interview with actress Sherry Willis-Birch, 
a five and a half minute interview with writer Barney Cohen, a four minute interview with composer John Beale, a seven minute interview with makeup artist Gordon Smith, an eight minute interview with production designer Ruben Freed, and finally a 17 minute interview with the band White Sister. The interviews go over all the aspects of the film, and the effects guy even mentions some deleted gore scenes with the revelation that this scene originally ended with the killer jamming a knife into the back of this guy's head with the blade coming out of his mouth. Man, that would have been so cool to see. It would have been nice getting a commentary track or some promotional material included here. But I'm being greedy. There's a lot of great stuff here. No reversible art is included, just a fantastic original poster art, which I just love. Killer Party is a fun and unique 80s slasher movie. Even with the missing gore, there's a ton to love here. Excellent picture quality and some great special features makes this one a no-brainer. Highly recommended.